Welcome to Jeffy Noor, with the Executive Director of the Black Archives History and Research Foundation. We're certainly glad that you're here with us, coming to us from Instagram and also coming to you live from Facebook. We're going to take a moment just to send out a little message to make sure everybody know that we are here. And we're so glad to have each of you as part of this program that we do for our virtual Safer at Home series, regardless of whether they are beginning to uh, open up uh, everything slowly, we still want to encourage everyone to stay safe as possible. It's very important that we stay safe and we care for our families and our loved ones that are around as we are still combating uh, this, this particular uh, virus. So we are letting people know on Instagram that we're on. We're going to let people know on Facebook that we're on. We got a few people on Facebook. We have more people on Instagram. We come to you each and every week. I'm just going to do a couple of waving to my Facebook, my Instagram people. Let me know that they're here. Georgetown Monroe, thank you so much. That's Nana. We're going to just wave to everybody. Pink Roses, glad to have you. Boss Misha. Um, Lewis, Granny Girl, thank you so much. Those are my employees that are on. Alicia, awesome, awesome. Swamp May just left here, uh, helping us keep this place safe. Just saying hello to everyone. And uh, appreciate you tuning in each and every week for this Jeopardy No More. I know many have been waiting for it. Uh, Facebook, how are you doing, Facebook? Uh, glad to have you today. Normally I have Instagram on my right, Facebook on my left. Uh, but for some reason, I got it backwards this week. So, welcome to my left side, uh, Instagram and Facebook. Welcome to the right side of the, the camera. So, uh, we certainly appreciate you. We hope that everybody can hear me well. Want to get more people on as we get ready to get started. Uh, of course, we've learned over a period of time that we have so much fun on this show that we lose track of time, and in losing track of time, we go over our extended time. We want to try to make sure that we keep our time um, accurate <laughs> so that we don't go over uh, on this uh, Jeopardy nor sponsored to sponsored in part uh, by the Southeast Overtown Park West Community Redevelopment Agency uh, as well as the Simpkins Foundation, Miami-Dade County, uh, Florida, uh, Farpan, Farpan, Florida African American Heritage Preservation Network uh, supports programming here at the Black Archives, uh, supporting the Safer at Home, uh, those that are watching from those organizations, we certainly appreciate you. Uh, I have somebody, okay, I have, thank you, Kenya Morley, for uh, adding people. She, he or she, I'm sorry, I can't tell on Facebook, is adding people to come on board. Uh, I don't know if anybody's coming on board from the John Henry Clark Speaks group that I'm in. On Facebook, if you are, just say that you are. You are. You heard about us from the John Henry Clark uh, Speaks uh, group on Facebook, and I just want to give a shout out to that uh, wealth of information that comes from being a part of that uh, uh, think tank, that group of thinking individuals uh, that that discuss uh, things that are happening in our world uh, to people of color. Uh, so, Evie Queen, welcome, Evie Queen. You're here each and every week. Thank you so much. Great to see you, Evie Queen. Uh, every week you've been here. Let's see if you're going to win this week. Uh, Benj uh, O'Brien, thank you for joining. I'm just giving a couple of little shout outs. Again, on Facebook, Kenya Morley, thank you so much for, for uh, coming on and, and, and also adding people to come and join. I'm just going to give people just a few more time because we want people to be able to plug in. Uh, if you want to, you can press on, on Instagram, press the little airplane and invite your friends to come on and play this game of Jeopardy Noir with us. Uh, if you're uh, on Facebook, you definitely can uh, send out and add people. Uh, welcome, uh, Goofy T, glad to have you. Goofy T on, on Instagram just joined us. So we're gauging, gauging, gauging this time. Before we get started, um, we're going to be real soon putting up the first question i have my staff on board taking notes just want to talk briefly about the things that you may receive we haven't been able to send it out in the mail yet but uh certain things that we uh give we're going to send out the people that are participating or winning as soon as things level up we have this one uh book here 
uh, which is uh, a collector's edition of the visions of our 44th president. This is an exhibit that we did here at the Black Archives, I believe in 2015. Um, where we honored uh, Barack Obama through many artists who were able to paint a bus of Barack Obama. This is the book that has all 44 artists drawn bus. This is a great keepsake, going to be pretty valuable. It's also a signature book by the Black Archives. Uh, we did that in partnership with the Charles Wright Museum. So we'll be sending things like this out to our participants and winners. Uh, we also have keepsakes like this, coffee table holder, that we'll be sending out. Uh, this is part of an exhibit that we did with Jackson Health Systems. Uh, this is a, uh, a drink holder. And also, uh, we'll be sending out one of our two collector's mugs for the Black Archives. Uh, we'll be sending out to you uh, this particular mug here, or another one that we have uh, that's similar. This one has a picture of the Black Archives night version of the, of the facility uh, with, with the information of the Black Archives. This is a great keepsake that you uh, will be able to uh, keep or you can give it to a friend. So uh, we're certainly glad that we'll be sending these out to you. So if, you, if you're playing and you win and you get a message from our official page, that's Vault South Florida, or you get a message from our Black Archives page, History and Research Foundation, uh, asking for your address, that's a legitimate request because we want to get uh, these keepsakes in your hands for being a participant and supporting our Safer at Home initiative. Uh, for those of you that are, have Cash App, if you would like to support the Black Archives History and Research Foundation, the Black Archives is a research repository that was started in 1977. For those that don't know, uh, it, it holds the history of Blacks in Miami from 1896, which is the city of Miami's incorporation, to the present. Uh, it was started by Dr. Dorothy Jenkins Fields, and uh, it has grown to have uh, saved several historic sites throughout Miami, as well as get several of these buildings placed on a local and a national registry. So we just wanted to give you that backside of the Black Archive. So if you see a need and you feel a need to support us, you can by Cash App, by uh, Dollar Sign Bolt. This supports our programming. Uh, we're a membership nonprofit organization. So we're gonna get ready to get started. Thank you, B.S. Smitty, for joining. I am Christine B. Thank you so much for joining us again. And everybody that has joined us for the first time on Facebook, we're getting ready to start. Jeopardy Noir. All right, we're getting ready for the first question that we have for this contest. And we're like I said, we're gonna to try to pay close attention to time because we've been going over the hour. It's been that exciting. Uh, the answers have been that great. Uh, but we're going to try to make sure that we uh, keep our uh, program limited so that we can record the whole thing. Uh, again, my name is Timothy Barber. I am the executive director of the Black Archives. Again, if you see me looking to my left, I'm looking to Instagram today. And you see me looking to my right, I'm talking to Facebook just so that you don't get confused. I have two cameras going. I'm live on Instagram and live on Facebook. So with that being said, we are ready for our, are we ready for our first question? Is anybody ready for the first question? All right. We're going to get started right where we left off on last week, right where we left off on last week. Let's see how many history buffs we have in here. And if you are joining us from my uh, university course uh, on African American history, definitely in the comment section, let me know you're here with your real name. So I know that you are on board and feel free to answer the questions. The way that this works is I present the question and you have the opportunity, Facebook has the opportunity to answer, someone on Instagram has that opportunity to answer. We're taking two scores because in some instances, one app may be delayed. You are to type your answer into uh, the message book, uh, into the comments area, and the first one that comes up with the right answer, that's the winner of that particular question. So Instagram, are we ready? Facebook, are we ready? All right, let's get it on. I think I may have given that answer. Hey, Nancy, how you going? Nancy Rodriguez, great to have you on from my uh, history class. Uh, great to have you on. This question, what is the celebration of freeing of the last slaves in Texas? What is the celebration? Hey, Tina Houston, I see you. What is the celebration of the freeing of the last slaves in Texas? Do I have an answer on Instagram? Do I have an answer for Facebook? What is the celebration of freeing of the last slaves in Texas? Every queen has the answer on Instagram. Every queen has that answer. I did give that one away, so it probably is not. That one don't count because the answer did flash on the screen. 
But every queen answered it. Thank you so much for letting me know that I had that little uh, technical glitch. Uh, Facebook, anyone on Facebook that's given us this particular answer? Which I already flashed on the screen. So we're going to move forward. We're going to move forward. The answer, yes, it is. The answer is, uh, let's see if my pointer is working. My pointer is not working. So yes, the answer is Juneteenth. The answer is Juneteenth. Uh, yes, you're right. I am Christine B. I gave that one away. Uh, Juneteenth uh, is a celebration that many people have adopted, uh, not just in Texas, but also on the East Coast. Uh, that was the freeing the, when the last slaves in Texas realized that uh, slavery had been abolished. Uh, this was in Texas in June. Uh, I know in Florida, it was a different time. It was in May in Florida. Uh, but many people have adopted that Juneteenth uh, day as a significance for the freeing of the slaves. So that answer is Juneteenth. Okay, ready for the next question. Who said, we wear the mask that grins and lies? What author said that we wear the mask that grins and lies? Thank you, Every Queen said that is May 20th in Tallahassee when slaves were notified that they were free. Uh, and we want to shout out to the Rally House, uh, Dr. Altamese Barnes, who always makes sure that celebration goes through in, in Tallahassee. Who said, we wear the mask that grins and lies? Ah, got an answer on Instagram. I do have an answer on Instagram. Facebook, we got to catch up. Do we have this answer on Facebook? I do have my Instagram answer. I am Christine B. Uh, you have that answer correct. Do we have an answer on Facebook? I'm going to give it just a moment, Facebook. I'll turn my music on. Facebook got to catch up, Facebook. Where are we? Oh, wait, Facebook. Wait a minute. I've been mistaken. I'm sorry, Facebook. I do have an answer. Vanessa Wood of Bowers. I don't know why my, uh, my um, messages were held up. Hello. Uh, Ms. Hester Samuels, uh, hello, I'm Mert Jones, welcome, yes, Connie Kanara, welcome, I do apologize, Facebook, uh, my, my messages for some reason were, uh, were paused, and I'm just going to it, and I see Connie is on, Keela Dixon, uh, how you doing, Kenya Morley, all right, uh, got a group, a good group of people here, Vanessa Wood of Bowers answered that question on Facebook, so the answer for this question, uh, very simply, and uh, is, Without a doubt, uh, let's see if I can get back up where I was at. Good. The answer is Paul Lawrence Dunbar. So, yes. Oh, no. Excuse me. I do apologize. Let's see who answered first on Facebook. Yeah, Ms. Bowers answered first on Facebook. So, yes. Welcome, welcome. And we have uh, Christine B. answered here on Instagram. I apologize, Facebook. Uh, I did not know that my... You, people are on Facebook talking, so we do have a good group of people on Facebook. So that answer did come from, uh, first was from Vanessa, my good friend, Florida and I'm Vanessa Wood of Bowers. Welcome so much. Let's keep it moving. Are we ready for our next question? What was the dividing line between white Miami and the colored section of Miami? What was the dividing line between white Miami and the colored section of Miami? What was that dividing line? between white Miami and the colored section of Miami. What was the dividing line between white Miami and the colored section of Miami? Do I have an answer? Close, Ms. Kennard, the wrong area, wrong area, the colored section of Miami. Nope. Uh, still waiting for that answer. Remember, I said the colored section of Miami. That's a little history. We'll give you some background history on that. The colored section of Miami. What was the dividing line? See, I see a lot of people on Facebook and Instagram. You're, you're, you guys are both in, uh, in Liberty City, which Liberty City was a white area uh, until the building of um, uh, Liberty Square housing. But yet, the color section, the area that is known as the colored section of Miami. There was only one area known as Color Town. What was the dividing line between white Miami and the colored section of Miami? Historically, 
Miami was known as, uh, the black part of Miami was known as Colored Town. Uh, what was the dividing line between the white section of Miami and Colored Town? I know someone here has to have that answer. Where are my towners at? I got my shirt on. Where are my towners at? Towners. Where are my towners for life? You guys uh, deal with this every day. I just gave you a... No, not Coconut Grove. Not Coconut Grove. Yes, Miss Samuels. That's right on Facebook. Was it 95? All right. I see we're all over the place. Ah, Georgetown Monroe. You are... No, not Flagler. Not Flagler Street. Not Flagler Street, but you're very close. We are talking about Overtown. We are talking about Overtown. That question has ended. We're going to move and let you know what this answer is. And a lot of you are probably going to kick yourself. It was the Florida East Coast Railroad. Colored Town. In 1904, the area of Overtown was known as Colored Town. That was how it was described in the directory of 1904. But the dividing line that separated Colored Town from White Downtown was the railroad track. That's when Julia Tuttle and Henry Flagler, when they developed the city, said we'll give uh, the blacks the west side of the railroad track and the whites will take the east side of the railroad track. And if you're ever in Miami, if you're ever in Overtown, everybody has to get off on 95 and drive across those tracks through Overtown on Northwest 8th Street, as well as 11th Street in, in many cases. So the railroad track is what separated the black area on the white area. We're getting ready to move on. We didn't have a winner on that particular question, but we will move on. The next question. If you're following the Black Archives virtual uh, series, our archivist presented this on the first session. D.A. Dorsey owned the patent for which invention? D.A. Dorsey owned the patent for which invention? D.A. Dorsey owned the patent. Well, and I doubt any of you get this, but if anybody that was a part of that session uh, that she presented, D.A. Dorsey, she mentioned what was the invention that D.A. Dorsey uh, hosted. Because we do have more than just Jeopardy Noir, uh, but we also have uh, um, Is It True Tales from the Magic City, and we have other programming. So she mentioned this invention on Is It True Tales from the Magic City. D.A. Dorsey owned with, uh, the patent for which invention? You can even just name, uh, if you don't know the, the, the invention, you can name the product or the what the what he developed this invention for. Anyone, let's start the music just momentarily. And let's see, do we have anybody that has been following us able to name this patent for this invention? Yes, Ms. Byers, you should have gotten that uh, that last question. D.A. Dorsey owned the patent for which invention? Just want to make sure I had no answers. Okay, we're going to move on. Where are my, my historian buff, my history buff set? Let's give you that answer. D.A. Dorsey owned the collapsible airplane rotor. D.A. Dorsey. The man that owned Fish Island, the first millionaire in Miami, uh, he created and patented the collapsible airplane rotor, and he owns that patent, the collapsible airplane rotor. So we're moving on. We're moving on. Are we ready? Instagram. Are we ready? Facebook. Let's go. Next question. This Olympic sprinter turned American football wide receiver in the National Football League for the Dallas Cowboys. Come on, Miamians. This Olympic sprinter turned American football wide receiver in the National Football League for the Dallas Cowboys. Where all my Cowboys fans are? Where all my Cowboys fans are? I got some late responses coming in on Facebook, but uh, this Olympic sprinter, this Olympic sprinter turned American football wide receiver. Oh, all right. I have an answer on Facebook. I have my answer on Instagram. I have my answer on Facebook. And I have my answer on Instagram. We want to give a shout out to Georgetown Monroe for the answer. And on Instagram, I want to give a shout out to Miss Vanessa Woodward Byers. Woodward Byers. Thank you so much. And that answer is as such, Robert Lee Bob Hayes. Robert Lee Bob Hayes. Yes. That is the answer, Robert Lee Bob Hayes. 
Thank you so much. Are we ready for the next question? It should get easier for this. We're going to make it a little easier. Let's see what we can do. Where was Zora Neale Hurston born? Come on now. Where was Zora Neale Hurston born? I should look down and look up and the answer is already on the screen. Zora Neale Hurston, where was she born? Where was Zora Neale Hurston born? I have my answer on Instagram. I do have my answer on Instagram. Uh, EB Queen, EB Queen one has my answer on Instagram. Do I have my Facebook answer? Come on, somebody on Facebook. Where was Zora Neale Hurston born? All right, I have my answer on Facebook. So my answer on Instagram uh, goes to, my answer on Instagram goes to EB Queen one My answer on Facebook goes to Hester Samuels. Hester Samuels, good answer. Eatonville, Eatonville, yes. Yes, let's move on. Let's move on to the next question. All right, my fam Ewings. When was Florida Agriculture and Mechanical University founded? When was? What year? What year? You could just name the year. What year was Florida A&M University College on the highest of seven hills founded? The Florida Normal College for Colored People. What year was FAMU founded? Florida A&M University. What year was FAMU founded? Still waiting on our answer. What year? All right, I have my answer. Georgetown Monroe on Instagram. And I knew Ms. Byers, if you didn't get that answer right, we would have to check your Rattler card. We have our answer on Instagram. We have our answer on Facebook. The year was 1887. Georgetown Monroe has the answer as well as Vanessa Byers. Thank you for that answer on Facebook. Thank you for that answer on and she had the, the month and the day. So thank you so much for that answer, 1887. All right, are you ready for this next question? This next question is coming up. What were the turpentine camps in Florida? What were the, <laughs> Connie said TSU rock. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, but when they're not playing Florida a and you ain't gonna win on that. <laughs> what year? Bob Hayes was a rattler. Yes, that's right, Miss Evie Queen. Bob Hayes was a rattler. So what year, what were the turpentine camps in Florida? What were the turpentine camps in Florida? What were the turpentine camps? Anyone has that type of answer. I'm gonna turn my music on on that one because I, I know you're not gonna answer that question. What were the turpentine camps in Florida? Anybody on Instagram wanna give me, I know it may be a lot to write, you know, uh, so anybody on Facebook, Instagram, Facebook, what were the turpentine camps in Florida? What were they? What were the turpentine camps in Florida? All right, where were the turpentine camps in Florida? I know that's a little difficult one. That's on my hard scale uh, for some of our questions. And the turpentine camps in Florida, just to let you know, uh, this is where African-American prisoners will work like slaves, cutting down pine trees to produce turpentine, tree sap. Uh, they use uh, African-American prisoners uh, to cut down the pine trees to produce turpentine or the tree saps, yes, yes, this was this was like a, a slave camp uh, for, we know that, and just historically, we do know that after slavery, uh, you know, America had to find another way to get work. You don't go just from a free work enterprise to now uh, you have to start paying for labor, uh, free labor enterprise. So they came up with a prison system, and that was a way that they continued to the labor. Even Flagler's Railroad. Uh, were built by prisoners, uh, black prisoners. That's a story that we don't talk about uh, historically. We talk about the black workers that came with the railroad, but uh, actually many of the black workers uh, were prisoners. Okay, my father, Ken Morley. All right, Ken, Kenya Morley. 
My father would be so upset with that. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. You join us each and every week, Ms. Morley. Uh, you'll be right on time. You'll be an expert at the history of Florida and Miami. Okay, we're moving on to our next question. Our next question. What was the first African-American newspaper in the country? That should be an easy one. What was the first African-American newspaper in this country? What was the first African-American newspaper in the country? What was the first African-American newspaper in the country? What was the first? No, no, not that's not the answer. Still waiting on the right answer. We are still waiting on the right answer. I'll give you a hint. It was 1827. What was the name of that newspaper? Not the Pittsburgh Court Courier and not the Miami Times. Oh, we have our answer. We have our answer on Facebook. We do have our answer on Facebook. That answer goes to Miss Vanessa Byers. Vanessa Byers has the answer on Facebook. Do we have anybody on Instagram that has the answer? Facebook is catching up this week. Facebook. We have some heavy hitters on Facebook. Okay, we're going to move on. That answer is the Freedom's Journal, formed in New York City, 1827. A couple of uh, black free, free slaves, uh, free blacks, excuse me, uh, developed this newspaper that talked about uh, blacks. The Freedom's Journal. The Freedom's Journal. That answer goes to Ms. Byers on Facebook. Nobody on Instagram came up with the answer. Moving on. Moving on. This should be an easy one fairly for many of us. Which HBCU is the oldest independent institution of higher education in Florida? Which HBCU is the oldest independent institution of higher education in Florida? Who could give me that answer? Which HBCU is the oldest independent? The oldest independent. Institution of Higher Education in Florida. I'm sorry that answer is not correct, Mr. Georgetown Monroe. That answer is not correct. We still, it's still open. Still don't have the right answer. Instagram is throwing answers in, but they're not that right answer. It's not the right answers as of yet. All right, Facebook, we do have an answer. We do have an answer, Lynn Whitfield. Lynn Whitfield, we have that answer on Facebook. Instagram, I don't know what's going on. Usually Instagram is faster than Facebook. That answer goes to Lynn Whitfield on Facebook. Do we have an answer on Instagram? Going once, Instagram. Going twice. All right. That answer is Edward Waters College. Edward Waters College is that answer. So good job, good job, Lynn. Whitfield, thank you so much. Here's another one that may be somewhat easy for you. Who wrote the book? Uncle Tom's Cabin. I'm not even going to turn on the music on this one. I know the answers are going to pour through extremely flat, fast on this one. Who wrote the book? Uncle Tom's Cabin. Who wrote the book? Coming to you live from the Black Archives History and Research Foundation here in Miami. Who wrote the book? Uncle Tom's Cabin. Do I have an answer? Do I need to turn the music on? Do I have an answer? Who wrote the book? Uncle Tom's Cabin. That's giving you time to Google it. Ah, I have an answer on Instagram. I do have my answer, War Round Carter. War World Round Carter. I believe that's the name over here. Answered it on Facebook. My answer goes to Lynn Whitfield again. Lynn Whitfield has the answer, and that answer is Harriet Beecher So. Harriet Beecher Stowe. I think I have an easy one. So World Round Carter and Miss Lynn Whitfield is on Facebook. Going on to our next question. What year did Florida become a state? What year did Florida, Florida become a state? What year did Florida become a state? I'm going to hit my music on that one. Hit my music. Get back. I'm going to change the music. Put some James Brown on this thing. What year 
did Harriet Stowe become, I mean, excuse me, what year did Florida become a state? <laughs> Connie cannot say, wait, we can Google? <laughs> Some people are Googling. I have my answer. World Round Carter, I have my answer. Lynn Whitfield, I have my answer. So somebody has to be Googling out there. The answer, we have our answer, World, World Wound Carter. World Wound Carter on Instagram, Facebook, again, has come in. Ms. Lynn Whitfield has that answer. That answer is 1845. 1845, Florida became a state. 1845. All right, moving on. we got a few more moments that we have uh, before we call this episode. We're moving forward. The next question. Name this well-known fort that is part of, of the Florida Black Heritage Trail. Name this well-known part, this well-known fort that is part of the Florida Her Black Heritage Trail. Name this well-known fort that is part of Florida Black Heritage Trail. Do I have my answer? Instagram. Can I have an answer? Facebook. Name this well-known fort that is part of the Florida Black Heritage. All right, I have my answer. E.B. Queen has my answer on Instagram. Do I have an answer on Facebook? My answer is in on Instagram. Is my answer in on Facebook? Name this well-known fort that is part of Florida, the Florida Black Heritage Trail. Going once, going twice. The answer. E.B. Queen has this particular answer. That is Fort Mose. Fort Mose is the answer. E.B. Queen. Instagram, thank you for that answer. Okay, here's our next question. Are we ready? Next question. Which country received the most African slaves? The most enslaved Africans. I want to rephrase that. Which country received the most enslaved Africans? Africans. Which country received the most enslaved Africans? Which country received the most enslaved Africans? Uh, Hester, Lynn's comment came in first. Lynn's comment came, answer came in right before yours, so. Okay. Which country? I have my answer on Instagram. I am Christine B. I am Christine B. I have my answer on Facebook. That is Vanessa Byers. I am Christine B on Instagram and Ms. Byers on Facebook. And that answer is, misconception is Brazil. Brazil, that answer is Brazil. Somebody said United States, uh, no. Uh, most Africans that were enslaved uh, was taken to Brazil to work on the sugar plantations. Okay, got just about two more questions we're gonna have and then we're gonna close out for the day. I did get a time check from my staff. Uh, let's move on to the next question, are we ready? Who is the director of the movie Black Klansman? Who is the director of the movie Black Klansman? It's a good movie to watch. Great, good movie to watch. Very funny. Uh, and, and this person, is, is his satire of history is extremely, uh, extremely brilliant. But who is this director that directed Black Klansman? Georgetown Monroe has the answer on Instagram. Do we have the answer on Facebook? Georgetown Monroe has come from behind and, and is pushing his answer. Do we have the answer on Facebook, going once Facebook. All right, we have our answer on Facebook, Byers, Miss Byers on Facebook. The answer is Spike Lee. That answer is Spike Lee. Let's go on to our last question. This is our last question of the day. Uh, and I hope that you can get this answer. Might be a little difficult on a scale of one to 10. It may be an eight, maybe an eight. Uh, let's see. Who has this answer? In February of 1990, he was elected for the highest student position at Harvard Law School. In 1990, he was elected for the highest student position at Harvard Law School. 
Who was this person? Who was this person? In February 1990, he was elected for the highest position at Harvard Law School. Harvard Law School. Do we have that answer? Do I need to turn on the music to make everybody, get everybody to start thinking? Put your thinking caps on. Oh, I have my answer. I have my answer on Instagram. Turn the music off. I have my answer on Facebook. I have my answer on Instagram and we have our answer on Facebook. The answer is Barack Obama. I started to put the first black president of Harvard Law, uh, but I knew you would have got it easily. It's Barack Obama. The answer goes to I am Christine B. And the answer goes to uh, Ms. Vanessa Byers. I think we have one more. It's time for one more bonus question for this week. One more time for uh, one more question. I think you will like this question. I don't know if you'll get it. In 2015, she became the first black woman to win the Primetime Emmy for Outstanding Lead Actress Drama Series. Outstanding Lead Actress actress Drama Series. Name this person. In 2015, she became uh, the first black woman to win the Primetime Emmy for Outstanding Lead Actress Drama Series. Who is this person? I'm waiting. Do we have our answer? Still waiting? I know all my people on Facebook must be Googling right now because <laughs> nobody has it. Got my answer on Facebook. Uh, Byers, Byers, Ms. Byers has the answer. Ms. Byers has the answer. Pink Rose, welcome. Pink Rose 51 on Instagram came in and got the last question. That answer is Viola Davis, Viola Davis, Viola Davis. Listen. Thank you so much. We're cutting our time. Normally we go over and Instagram shuts off on us after the hour. This has been a great session. We have a lot of new people on, on online today. So we thank you so much for the support that you're giving to the Black Archives and our Safer at Home series. I certainly want to give a shout out to Ms. Connie Kennard, our partners uh, with the uh, GMCVB, the president uh, of the Multicultural du uh, Tourist Department. Uh, certainly give a shout out. Welcome, Ms. Byers. Great to have you. Ms. Samuels, as always, thank you so much for joining us this week. We have Jeopardy Noir 2 p.m. every Wednesday. So please tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to join us. It's a great opportunity for you to kind of test your knowledge and get your wheels rolling. Thank you so much for coming on. Lucy562, Georgetown Monroe. We certainly appreciate all of you. Thank you, Ms. Mert Jones, my, my, my uh, church mate here that works at University of Miami, Sister Jones. Thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate you. Uh, Viola, uh, Bi Ms. No, excuse me, Vanessa Byers won on Facebook. I don't know if they calculated uh, the uh, the Instagram. Oh, Camila's saying that Pink Rose that came on to answer the last question was her mom, <laughs> her mother. Uh, so hello, uh, Mrs. Pritchett, uh, for joining us. We appreciate you. Thank you so much, Connie. We appreciate all of you. Join us tomorrow. Tomorrow, our session will be held. Uh, this is uh, Legacies in Black History of Miami. Uh, that will be hosted by, um, uh, excuse me, uh, Louis, Louis Burton, our assistant archivist. He will be on. On Friday, we do our virtual tour. And please join us with your children on Saturday. Join us with your children on Saturday. Uh, for our Stories in Color with Camila Pritchett, and we're back again on Monday. Now, we have a special Lyric Live show, for Living Room Edition, that will be happening Friday night. Tomorrow night, Lyric Live, Living Room Edition. If you ever attended our Lyric Live on stage, we're unable to do Lyric Live. It was supposed to launch last, the seventh season was supposed to launch last week, uh, last month, but we, of course, do the COVID-19. So we're going to do a Lyric Live. Cello is going to host that. That will be on our, uh-oh, they're saying on Instagram, there was a tie between I am Christine B and Georgetown Monroe. Thank you for that tie. I'm Christine B and Georgetown Monroe. Uh, Lyric Live, the living room edition will be on Friday, first Friday at 8 p.m. Uh, join us, but it will be handled on our Lyric Theater MIA social media handle. The Lyric Theater MIA social media handle. Lyric Live is an amateur night show. Cello and DJ H2 are going to do a great job doing that. We thank you so much. Uh, Instagram, if you ask about it, Instagram is at Balt South Florida, at Balt South Flow, at Balt South Flow. If you want to join us and support the Black Archives, 
Our Cash App is there. We appreciate everyone. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. And I'll see you next week on Jeopardy Noir. Have a great afternoon. Namaste.